I just think Bendemi is the best kept secret. <laughs> My husband and I have lived in lots of different places and we just love driving up the Moombies and you hit a certain spot and you can feel the temperature drop and you think, oh, we're nearly home. I think I've met the most genuine people here in Bendemeer. Intelligent, supportive, witty. It's very therapeutic, it's very healing, and it's just a fabulous place. The Bendemeer Hotel was first established by Mr Glover in 1864. It's a very, very sentimental and special hub for this little Bendemeer community. The support that my husband and I have had from the community as well, that they were very conscientious that we were trying to keep the locals employed and they were supporting us the whole time through the pandemic. So it's been a credit to the local people. Mark and I, my husband, are extremely grateful to them. I'm very proud to be part of Bendemeer because it is a beautiful and precious little community. In the workshop today we had a couple of different speakers from different organisations. I learnt some new networking skills through them. One activity was painting a jigsaw, sort of got us back down to our, our childhood days, uh, getting back using paints or, or textures and just reflecting on what's happened over the last few years during these difficult times. My name's Kate and I work for the RAMP program. I've just spoken today about all of the different things that people are dealing with and to acknowledge that it's been a really difficult time. We came through drought, we then went into a pandemic which is still ongoing. We've dealt with bushfires, we've dealt with mouse plagues, um, and now we're dealing with overseas war. So people are generally quite overloaded. It's really normal to be tired, to feel uncertainty, to feel fear, to feel anger, a whole range of emotions. People do find it hard to get up each day and, and get started and to, to keep going. It's just too overwhelming. Human beings, we're really relational and we need each other all of the time. And to make those connections and to get along and to help each other and to lift each other up is really who we are as people and, and we really need each other to, to do life and to do it well. And adjust to a new normal and continue to... For a period afterwards, we could still see, you know, the fires on, on the hills. And the most distressing thing was that there was water bombing. The pilots that were doing the water bombing were pilots that had come from America and they later died. So I found that very distressing that they had travelled over to Australia and they were obviously saving properties in this area and then later to lose their own lives. So that, that grief for, for them and their families has stayed with me. Hmm. I suppose just on reflection, I think it's, it's 28 months since the fires in Bendemeer and that was on a background of, of drought. And then we had COVID my mother, who was 90, 90 at the time, was living in Canberra independently and had a fall, and subsequent to that was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and she clearly couldn't live by herself, so she came up here to live with us. But the impact of COVID on her was just so confusing because she couldn't understand why she couldn't come with me when I did the shopping or why we couldn't go out and why she had to wear a mask and her hearing aid and her glasses. So it was a very confusing time for my mother. I think it's raised a lot of issues for a lot of us about how as a society we care for old people. 
being given the opportunity to come to this workshop, it's been a great opportunity. People that run it, Donna and her team, I'd just like to say thank you very much. Shows a lot of compassion. She's very passionate and I think it's very commending to her and the team.